information is with my family farm, Zeldon Farms, my father along today. It's a certified organic farm in College Grove. And I come to market at Organics Culture CSA at Farmers Market. So I'm going to talk about how TDA can help you market, and then I'm going to talk about uh, farmers markets, and then organic certification, and then the TAEP program. So our Pick Tennessee, you have heard of Pick Tennessee product. Excellent. Everybody here a member? Pretty much. You can apply for membership on PickTennesseeProducts.com. We've been connecting, connecting consumers to 1986. The link is free. It's just service for farmer marketing. Our 30,000 visits every month. We have 2,000 members. Actually, I think that number might be incorrect. Is this truly by itself? No. Oh, did I hit it? And there's 10,000 products listed on the website. This is an old logo in the middle here. Our new logo is a little bit more simple. If you have not received, if you are going to see products member and you have not received this, let me know and I'll send it to you because you can use it on all your marketing materials. So how do we support ours? We use a press. I did a press release around Christmas time for CSAs as a gift for other people. Buy the gift of healthy. About so I said press releases and we have print, radio advertisements, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. I don't know what I've done. We all, each individual um, department has a marketing specialist, a specialist, as I said, on farmers markets and organic and horticulture. So each little aspect of agriculture has a market that will help you. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, it's not kids and grandkids anymore. <laughs> now I know everybody has at least a Facebook account. Hang your head and do not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's free marketing for your farm and it's real easy to set up. It just, it's word of mouth million. <coughs> as I'm sure you, you hear Facebook all the time. And what's getting more is Twitter. Twitter has become Facebook. And you can follow Pick Tennessee products. Instagram, if you don't know what that is, it's, it's pictures of different things. So it's kind of, it's like Twitter but with pictures. So it's, uh, I know, I, I, I'm Spanish sometimes. But <laughs> Especially to Facebook and Twitter. I mean, do you Twitter is? No. No, I didn't hear yeah, that Delvin Farm has a Twitter. <laughs> Anyway, if you're going to do one social media avenue for your farm, I use either Twitter or Facebook. Because they're the Selling at the farmer. Is there anybody here who sells at farmer's markets? Um, it's important to have a signage on all your vegetables. You know when you walk over and you're trying to find a price and it, it just angers you, your price. I mean, what do you, most times you're like, oh, forget it. Make sure you have signage and pricing. Make sure your displays are are bountiful. If you sell out, if you start selling down, you can re obviously, or you can take it from a low to a smaller basket. Because you know when you're selling at a market, you buy some the You have like that last cute basket. Nobody will ask cucumber. Why is that? You may throw the cucumber away or take it. No one's going to buy that <coughs> cucumber. So you want to make sure that your display looks like you just have a, a ton of, make sure you have product information, how, and we'll get into using the word organic in a minute, how to make it last longer. A lot of consumers wear products such as greens, and they take it home, and they put that in, they just throw it in the refrigerator, but what's going to happen to it? It's going to wilt. So teach your consumers, put the bag of kale in a plastic bag, put spur. It should last to two weeks if you if you store it. But if they tell them and it rots on them, or they're not going to come back. And then also give us about your farm. Everybody wants to know who you are, that you have children, or you have baby rabbits, or you have baby rabbits that you eat, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> So talk a little bit about your farm and make sure you connect with your consumers. The National Organic is it's just a snapshot of the website and as for being really small, but it's cool that the deputy secretary was here because I was going to talk a lot of bit about USDA really helps us. So 
Now I don't have to talk so much through the phone. But organic food sales <coughs> grow every year just 20%, which is, it's hard to believe. We were talking on the way here, I forgot what we were talking about, my dad and I, and he said, you know these conventional farmers are just going to learn that organic is the way to go. But you said something like that. I started thinking, yeah, he's right. And people are, are they, want, they want to start eating more organic, even if it's just one of items. <coughs> so what is organic product? It is not simply avoiding chemi conventional chemicals. It's not substituting natural things for synthetic ones. It's more about, although that is part of it, it's more about the earth, stewardship of the earth, making sure you're in a way that helps the earth and helps the It's not even the importance of crop rotations, posting, biological diversity, all scientific facts that that you could talk about, but I <laughs> are organic practices. It's use crops of green manures, animal manures, crop, and so you know the importance of crop rotations. You wouldn't grow berries the same place that you grew them last year. It's gonna happen. You're gonna have pests. You're gonna have to spray, pests. and you're just not gonna build up the soil. It's maximizing your biological activity. The point of growing organically is to maintain long-term soil. You want to use crop rotations because it, you manage weeds and insects and diseases. You want to reduce the off-farm inputs as much as you can. So do your own composting, bring in home manures. And then focus on renewables, your soil, your water, your content management practices that maintain your balance on your farm so that you don't have to bring in products to spray. Can you see that? Okay. What does it mean to be an organic farm? Environmental steward, as I said, taking care of the earth, taking care of the soil, making sure that your farm is still around for your great-grandchildren. Organic farms limit their use of synthetics and fertilizers and pesticides. If they do have to use some substances, it's on list. It's uh, usually fishing for fertilizer or chicken litter or things that It's um, preventing preventative measures to keep the pest down. You might introduce benefits for, well, I'm, I'm thinking off the top of my head, bee bugs and aphids, for instance. So introduce beneficial ends of spraying it if it moves. You know. <laughs> oh, okay, something moved on that point. So, Bring it, do a little research and figure out how you can kill bugs with the good bugs. And it's a fertility nutrient management. So you want to focus on building the soil natural methods. Do organic and natural mean the same thing? What do you all think? Not necessarily. <coughs> lots of, was it Kashi? Was that the company? The company Kashi? The yes. K-A-S-H-I using the word Natural, it's a marketing ploy. Come to find out there is, I forgot now, like corn syrup or <coughs> and GMO corn and all the bad stuff and these granola bars that I'm guilty of eating still. Anyway, natural does not mean organic. They're not interchangeable terms. And the only way you can start organic is if you are USDA certified organic. Um, this is hard to read or handle on your slide, but what I wanted to point out was that USDA website has a great organic section. It's defined it all. <laughs> so you have to type in, go to the USDA.gov website, type in organic culture, and then you can find it. But they do not make you to find organics. I don't know if that's intentional or what, but uh, I just wanted to, they do have really great information. Unfortunately, farmers don't have a lot of time to sit at the computer and, I mean, I, I can't Amen. Say, I don't even know if my dad knows how to turn the computer. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, farmers don't have a lot of time to sit through the USDA website and try to figure out where they can get help for organics, but that's why. So give me a call at the Department of Action, I'll walk you through it. But if you heard on a Sunday afternoon, then Hispanic Agriculture, they've got great resources on it. Is there anybody in this certified organic? I'm certified crazy. Crazy? 
And two, we have a Lazy Dog Farms and Delvin Farms certified organic. But why be certified? What's, what's the point? Well, the benefit is it's insurance for your consumers. Your consumers are guaranteed that when they buy strawberries, excuse me, they are grown natural, are grown organic. It's benefits for you because besides helping the natural of your farm, you're growing organically, it kind of gives you a leg up on your competition. You're able to get prices for your products. You're able to say this is truly grown organically. Oh, and I might add that USDA does not delves come out and inspect your farm. They do it party contracts. So for instance, we use farms uses QCS out of Florida. So you are inspected yearly. It is a percentage of sales. It is, it's kind of costly. Would you say it's kind of costly? But I believe it's worth it in the end because you can say they're organic. And that's what people are looking for now. And you're getting a little seal in the corner. Are there any questions before I move on to TAEP? About certified organic? Yes. If you have somebody selling at a market and they have organic, supposed to label it like not certified. That's a really good question. They cannot use the word organic. They can say it is grown. Can they say grown now? Even though they can. I guess, they can say naturally grown. They can basically. say naturally grown with organic methods. They can't, yeah, use, they can't use the word organic at all. Yeah. <coughs> Your best option is just to describe you how you grow it. <coughs> so you don't use chemicals. Without synthetic, chemicals. Synth synthetic chemicals or anything. But the last thing I saw is the $11,000 fine instance of using organic if you get caught. So it's, yeah. it's not something to grow. That's true. And you know, they do. You think, oh, USDA is so big, they'll never know. But they know. They know. <laughs> Their big brother, but they do come out and do inspections, and they down on you. Can you use the term organically grown? Yeah. Okay. You can't use the term organically grown. You can't. The word organic cannot be anywhere near it. Do you have to use the word organic completely? Yes. You can't use organic practices. No. Okay. So you you have to say use natural practice or use or or pesticide free. Yeah. Or free. Grown without pesticides or herbicides. Yeah. It doesn't look as pretty on a banner as organic produce. And people try to break the rule all the time because, you know, when you're on the market and you see a farm across the way that has on their banner organic produce, go over to them. But unless they are certain, they cannot use that word organic. Now, there is a small fine print on that website that if you less than $5,000 as on your farm, your entire farm income is 5000 or less, then you can use the word organic. But you still have all the rules and have the records to back that. Right? Yes, that's, you, that's what, you still have to follow the rules. And if, if somebody says, you say like a USDA guy comes down and says, you, you're calling, oh, but I'm at less than $5,000. He's going to say, show me all your records, your invoice, your inputs, your, your audit trail. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the, that's, that's really what the heck we're just going to get certified. Because you got to keep records in. Yes? How much does it cost to get a organic study farm? Uh, how much does it cost to, it depends on the acreage of your farm, that's the percentage of your sales, but I believe that, and it also depends on the third party agency certifier. Uh, 3000 It costs. Or is it 3500 Our farm is, we got uh, 100, a little less than 200 acres in certification. Upfront cost for an inspector and an inspection fees uh, uh, fifteen hundred roughly. Then you have a twice a year assessment fee of 005 percent, oh five percent of total sales. Total sales. So let's say you've got a uh, hundred thousand dollars in organic sales. What's point oh five percent? How much? That's five hundred. Huh? Five thousand. Yeah. 500. 500, okay, okay, yeah. And that's twice a year. That's twice a year. So, like, the that's total, it's about 3,000. No, it's, it's costing us closer to six right now. Oh, sorry. That's not, that's not the total cost <laughs> to get in compliance. That's not what? That's not the total to get in compliance. 
gearing up for it to try. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It costs us a lot more money. It costs us, yeah. Here's how much should it cost you? We're a, we're certified on livestock also. Uh, ours is running about 1500 to 2000 a year. We have 140 yeah. certification <clears throat> livestock and process. What gets us is the percent that, that uh, assessment twice a year. It's pretty expensive. And they look for your instances, they'll compare, um, like, lot 45 of your squash, they'll compare those invoices for where you sold that squash. And, I mean, you have to show them exactly the seed you bought and where that seed was planted, and they'll compare the pounds of produce that came off your farm to the seed that you bought, which also has to be certified or seed. So, it's an intense <coughs> information. Would you say it's worth it? I think it is. It's, it's given us a marketing opportunity we wouldn't have had before. It's given us a new farm. We can go into large markets like this market, which is basically have our, our runs of species. And it opens up doors to restaurants and whole foods, grocery stores. Yes. Uh, how come y'all use certification from a company out of Florida, not Kentucky? There, there's no, there's, there's nobody, nobody here. Nobody here Kentucky, Kentucky no longer certifies anybody outside Kentucky. Uh, yeah, Kentucky used to, but they don't know. Yeah. Florida's the closest. Florida's the closest. closest. That we'll do outside state inspections. All the states around us, mm -hmm. Kentucky, Georgia, they won't do outside inspections. It's also what the Chief does. Is it the I so haven't, you know, you know, I haven't compared to the... I mean, the other option is Ohio would be the closest that yeah, does out of state. Yeah, you have to pay for the inspectors travel. Yeah. Yeah. All right, TAEP. Has anybody ever used the producer documentation <coughs> grant available through the Department of Agriculture? What did you use it for? Uh, we got bed shapers, mulch layers, bulk layers. John, what did you use it for? We've got the greenhouse. Uh, Honeybees, expansion, and uh, oh, wow. mulch later with it's a It's a great program. It's a grant. It's to support Tennessee agriculture. It's livestock and equipment handling <coughs> facilities, bee storage, genetics for your cattle or goats or sheep, genetics, hay storage, grain storage. Producer diversification is the, the uh, fruit side. Excuse me. And just to give you a little background on uh, fiscal years 06 to 13, 4,903 hay barns <coughs> built, 8, 211 genetic projects, 12,308 equipment projects, sorry, 513 grain storage projects, uh, 1,251 feed storage projects, 1,159 producer diversification projects. Application, don't miss it. It's June through June 7th. And approvals will continue in the producer priority ranking system, which is online website that's on your paper. And you can submit it by paper or online. You used to not be online, so that's a I think that was new last year. And the website is tn.gov slash T8. And then you just click on the TAEP link, go down. And we also provide farming for public farming, <laughs> funding for public farmers, county and regional fairs, and state ag producer associations. So this would be like um, Tennessee Farmers Market Association or Agritourism Association, Beef and Livestock, so different associations. Forestry, forestry programs and quality, quality programs. And then you have the slide that's all the information because who's going to remember all those numbers? So there you have it. And then are there any questions? I got a question. Is there a Farm Fresh program in there? There is not. There's a Farm Bureau did Farm Fresh, and the Department of Agriculture gave Farm Bureau a large amount of money to get that going, and it was a partnership, Pick Tennessee Products and Farm Fresh, but it didn't, it didn't really get off the ground, so money's come back to Pick Tennessee Products. Peak Tennessee, it didn't cost you anything, did it? Oh, it's free. The Farm Fresh cost $100. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but they were both great programs, but 
So where do y'all get your money? It's a grant. It's a USDA grant. And we shared at Euro to do Farm Fresh. That was before I joined this. I don't really know why we share what that was about, but it's no longer. Any other questions? Yeah, who are you getting? <laughs> <laughs> you swallowed the water. Don't kill me. I have a baby boy in 10 weeks. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, yes. So, uh, for genetics, what do they do for genetics? What do they do for genetics? That's a livestock question I'm not familiar with. But you can, for instance, you can buy. Yeah, you can buy a bull genetic and inseminate your heifer to continue this bloodline. Can we get some money to uh, introduce new structures? Oh, yeah. Okay. I can fall under producer diversification. Yeah. So those money are given to the farmers. Right, they're given to the producers who are produced. Well, thank you all.